Why can't you access the points or nodes in Affinity Designer for a shape? You've got these points and you can modify the design, create a variety of different designs. And of course, depending on the shape, you'll get different points there. But the individual all the way around the cog, you want to modify those. Well, with it selected, the tool selected, the shape selected, you can go here and convert to curves. So click that. And now you've got access to the individual points or nodes. Key tool is the node tool. So just go here, node tool. With that, you can select an individual node. So just select that one and you can move it. And you can drag that to create a different design just for that cog. Undo. You can also select multiple ones. Now you will notice down the bottom, and I'm not gonna go through all the functionality along here, nor all the functionality along there. There's a lot. And you can see you've got drag here to marquee, select nose, lasso node. So if you hold down, say, the option or alt key, depending on PC or Mac, and this is always, of course, the thing with multiple names, what you can do, you can create a lasso. So you can just go over there and select different ones that way. Personally, I don't like that feature as much as just basically just going like that. But of course, you may find the lasso much easier. Or another option, of course, is just select there, hold down the shift, click and just click and add like that, that way. That's another option. You can go around and you've got multiple ones selected. And it may be more useful if you want to select, obviously ones where you've got gaps just to work through. Now, if you go over here and you've got shift and you click this one, these ones are not selected. And that's basically, it makes it a lot easier just to do it. You can, of course, do it last, you can just very carefully do it all the way around. You've got other options when you've got select different selections. Slightly confusing. I think you've got about like three layers of different options with the drags and holding down shift, whatever. And the shift's a useful one. So if you hold down the shift and do various moves, so if I move that now, you can see you've got constraint at 45 or 90 degrees, which is nice. But again, the one I really want to show, which I think is a really great feature, is with these selected, Make certain you click node. So just go there, just make certain that's selected there. And then hold down the control key. Now on the PC, it's gonna be different. So again, check down the bottom. What you need to look for is to constrain drag. And that will be along that bottom list. Use that one. So drag, and then with this one, use the control. And you can see you get this lovely sharp but what happens is that all these points, these ones here, these round ones, are not moving. Only the nodes are actually moving. And you can just drag that out all the way there to create some very extreme designs just dragged off in the distance. And of course you can do the same with the other ones. So let's just select those ones. And again, do exactly the same. Go to a node there. Again, hold down the control on the, on the Mac and you can do exactly the same. So there's a lot of great functionality all along the bottom. So just check out all the functions that you've got access to with these. But also you've got other options. So you can go here, click one, and you can see you've got this. You can modify these and just drag those points out there and just drag that out, drag it that way. And again, you can do, there's other functionality. As soon as you do that, you've selected that, you will notice that you can hold down different things and different actions will happen on those. Again, you can constrain by holding down the shift. The shift is a very useful one, mainly for constraining things. So once you've done that, you can also click here, convert. So that one's selected, none of the others are selected. The one that's selected, you can click convert. So click that and it will make it into a sharp, straight lines, basically straight, straight lines there. However, it's not slightly, it's only straight lines for the point of the node. You can see because this one has got a curve, it's got a point there going out, it's still got a curve for that line. So it's not, when it, when I say it's a corner point, that is the corner point, the sole one that you've selected, not the other one. So you still may see a curve. That's the thing to always remember. But if you select, of course, multiple ones, say you've got, let's just select that, make certain they are selected. Then you click convert, you can do convert for more than one. So click there, then you'll see you'll get the straight lines. If that's what you obviously want, you don't want a, a, any curvature to come in here. 
Now you'll notice as I hover over there with the node tool selected, you've got that change a cursor. So you can actually click on that and add another point. And you can also drag that back and forth. You can also not add a point, but you can just basically just lightly click on it, not clicking, like click and release. That adds a point, but just click and drag. That's a, there's a slight difference, but if you do that, you can then obviously drag this, make a nice curved design that way. You've also got other options as well. You've got these actions. There's a lot of functionality with this node tool. So with the actions here, you can select those. So I'm selecting a couple. Now I could select all of them or one. And what I can do, I can go here. And as long as you've got access to it, if you can't do it, the functionality, it will not be available. It will just be disabled. So what you can do is just click here and split curve. Now it doesn't split the curve. Slightly confusing name, but what it does, it adds a point between. So if you've got a point, one point and one point, in the middle, it will create a point for you. So the design will basically be exactly the same as it was before, but now you've got the additional point or node. Also what you've got with those ones selected, so select some of those, you can see you've got a lot of points now. You can go here. This one does actually split the curve. To my mind, it's, this, it's breaking the curve. <laughs> to me, split, break. Okay. What that does, it creates individual curves. So you can then see, drag that out there and click on that one. And you can see it's broken apart. You've got individual two points. So you've got two points, that's it. And you've got now, you've got an open path. So with this design, now this option's available, close curve. So if I select this curve, let's just go and select it. The curve selected, I can click here, close curve, and it will just put an additional point, just to close it off. So it's no longer open, it's not just a line. Also, you've got this as well. So you've got a number of points that can be selected and you can click here. There's another smooth option, smooth curve. So click that. And sometimes the result is particularly good. Sometimes, personally, it's, I prefer to do it using this option. Just go over here and do the smooth and then manipulate the design that way. To be honest, I've never been particularly amazed by the result from smooth curve. Maybe it's just me. But I click it and I think, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't... The result doesn't seem. Likewise, another tool that's not so useful, I think but maybe others will disagree, please put in the comments, is this feature, which is reverse curve. So you can click there and it will reverse the points. I suppose for some different shapes, it may be useful if you want one point. I think there should be a lot more functionality but with these things. However, you can see there is a lot of functionality still and you can manipulate and create all kinds of amazing designs with the note tool. And that's just the note tool. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you much.